Welcome to Emacs at Lunch. I have been pitching a lot, and when you pitch a lot, you end up doing a lot of work on the package you wrote to do presentations. So we've gotten some new ways to display images, and we've gotten some new ways to not display things that shouldn't be there. We're going to see how we can call a process to farm out showing a video with VLC. We're going to try out and open up the new text properties action, and see how it points the way to taking dslide to the next level. We have a lot of new options on the image action. Because all of the actions are EIEIO classes, you can run describe symbol and you'll see the documentation for every single slot on the action. In the doc string for each slot, you see the valid values and the default value. If you run EIEIO browse, you can see a list of all the classes so you know which ones to check out. You can now reveal images in the slide one by one, so you can talk about an idea and move on to the next idea without putting too much focus on any one. You can combine the one by one reveal behavior with the standalone display behavior to show each image full screen, talk about it a bit, and then tie together the ideas when you get to the end. You can also do standalone display without the image being visible in the slide at all, and you can do sequences of these in order to connect ideas with no distractions. The cursor is now hidden by default, and if you want to restore it, just call dslide cursor restore to hide it again, dslide cursor hide. Babel blocks have had their support expanded a lot since the early versions to do things like use the export settings and the result settings to control how we display the block and how we display the results. The block hidden in this slide implements an action, and here's what the source for that block looks like. Use the exports option to control the visibility of the block, and use the results option to control the visibility of the output. You may be presenting work that's in progress, or using org to organize your work on your presentation. It's convenient to be able to have tags and to-dos without having to scramble to remove them when it's time to do the presentation. This entry has a tag and a to-do, but I can't see it in the presentation or in the contents view. You might need to turn certain headings on or off for different audiences, or you might not be quite done with something by that 3.30 meeting. Now you can hide headings without having to remove them from the presentation. Now this heading does exist in the source for this presentation, but you won't see it anywhere. It's not in the contents, it's in between these two headings, but it won't be visited because it's commented. To use a custom filter, configure dslide default filter. To see how to write a filter function, see dslide built-in filter. These are the headings we filter by default. You can set the no slide tag, the no export tag, or just comment it by adding comment after the stars. The green heading for filtering headings actually has four children, but you can only see this one because the filter is applied to its children. The heading for using an export block is the only one that isn't filtered. Speaking of export blocks, dslide now hides them by default. This is what an export block looks like. You can't see it in the slide because it's hidden. To control which element types are hidden, configure dslide hide markup types. Now we're going to talk about using a process to farm something out to an external program in the middle of your presentation. We've seen a lot that you can do with text and images, but sometimes you really just need a video in order to animate an idea in motion. I'm going to step forward into a hidden Babel block. A video will open, it plays full screen, and then when it's done, it closes and returns back to the presentation. If we look at the source for this step, it's pretty obvious we're just calling a shell command. Most of the rest of this code is not necessary, it's just there for thoroughness. And we're calling VLC. VLC runs, it has an option to play and exit, and it returns control directly back to Emacs. Any kind of process that you need to control that's an external program, you can just do it with Babel blocks. Another thing that happens when you pitch a lot is you wind up with your company logo and tagline on a slide. But the tagline here just looks a little bit too plain. We need to make it spicy. The first or second time you write some ELISP to solve a problem like this is okay. But after that you start wanting something a little bit more reusable. You want to just add a little bit of metadata and get a spicy tagline. Here's a few more examples just to be thorough, and if we look at the source for the examples, we can see there's always just this adder dslide propertize. There's a affiliated keyword, and then the face property, and then the values inside the list are what gets assigned to the face property. So let's take a look at how this action worked to get some ideas about how to write other actions like it. This action is really similar to the markup hiding action. It's going to run once at the beginning of the slide, it looks at every single element, it does its work, and then it's done. 
What it's looking for when mapping are these affiliated keywords. That's how it recognizes which elements to work on. The value for that affiliated keyword is the configuration for the action for that element. Affiliated keywords are attached to elements. And because this action only runs once at the beginning of the slide, whether we're going forwards or backwards, it only implements dslide begin and dslide end. It's not going to react to any forwards or backwards steps. This is the entire source for the new action. It's very simple, but it's very flexible because it reads its configuration from the keyword. Because the options that it's applying are very flexible, the action is very flexible, even though it doesn't really do a whole lot. The class definition is as simple as it gets. This action doesn't store anything, it doesn't have any extra state, and so its slot list is completely empty. This method is basically doing all of the work. We map over the section, mapping every single element, and then we look and see if that element has one of these keywords. If it does, we're going to read the value, we'll create an overlay that's gonna cover that entire element, and then we will put the values from the keyword into the overlay. Now we've added the text properties to that overlay that applies to the element. And because we're not really going to touch this overlay for the life cycle of this slide, we'll just push it somewhere that it'll get cleaned up for us whenever this slide is done. In order to do the same thing, whenever we start the slide when we're going backward, dslide end just calls dslide begin. One of the big recent improvements was to overhaul the organization of the documents. I put everything into a manual so we can read it both inside Emacs as well as on the GitHub README. And I also added a high level overview of the implementation to make it easier for people to jump into the source. So I'm looking forward to some PRs. To talk about where we can add some value, I want to bring up this Master of Ceremonies package and this MC Focus command that's been doing a lot of heavy lifting in this presentation. The version on GitHub is a little bit old. I've done some work on it to add some bells and whistles, things like I can do highlighting or I can even save some text to play it back for later. But what I really like about it is just by having the dynamic padding and having the text scaling, it's really easy to focus on the right parts of code and it makes it a really powerful tool of teaching or talking about code. It also just seems to be a lot more pleasant to look at. And if you've only got text on screen, having these kinds of things built into dslide, I think makes it a lot more productive in terms of having a good result without having to do a lot of input. One reason I'm really excited about the new text properties action is just because of the way that it works with these affiliated keywords. It's really easy to target the exact element that you need, and because we're tagging each element that we need to work on, there's really no ambiguity about whether you need to have an action turned on or off. We can just always leave them on. We can add them to the dslide default actions. And this, I think, is the way that these, these actions need to work in the future, is that we want to have them basically always on, and we'll just instantiate them whenever we find the right keyword instead of having the user turn them on and off at the right places. And that got me thinking about how to make the Babel block integration easier because right now we've got the parameters for the Babel block and you also have this attribute keyword line and if you don't have it in the default actions you have to add the action to the slide and it's really just a lot of boilerplate. So what I think I want to do is get it down to just one parameter, just a dslide parameter. You tell me which way the block's going, and the action will execute it in the correct direction. So this would really minimize the amount of markup that we've got to do. Having less markup and having things on demand is definitely the direction I think we want dslide to go. Now, like I said, because I've been using dslide to pitch, a lot of these improvements are basically brought to you by PrizeForge. And PrizeForge is going to bring a lot more to Emacs and to open source. We're getting pretty close to turning on some switches to raise money to work on Emacs things. And if you think that sounds cool, go ahead and send me a hamburger on GitHub Sponsors. I'll turn off GitHub Sponsors, kick everybody off, and send them an email to go sign up to PrizeForge whenever that goes live. In the meantime, it's uh, been pretty fun watching viral meetups about how to use dslide turn into just meetups where people happen to use Emacs. Oh, and I have found some engineers, but if you do Rust and you have experience in SNS and social, feel free to drop me an email. See you next time.